The International Forum for Cotton Textiles and Accessories, FICOTA, seeks to validate the African cotton value chain through products and services, particularly in the CIMAC region. There is no need to further highlight the potential of the cotton industry as a dynamic tool for industrial growth as experienced in other economies like China, India, America. World cotton production is estimated at 25.2 million tons in 2018, with an upward trend in subsequent years. African production represents 10% of the quantity cited. Thus, Africa's potential in cotton cultivation and the variation it produces in quantity and quality is the raison d'être of FICOTA in addressing African cotton issues particularly in the CIMAC region. In two, its second edition, the first edition of FICOTA took place in December 2018 in the coastal town of Kribi in Cameroon under the joint patronage of the Ministry of Mines, Industry and Technology and the Ministry of Commerce of Cameroon. Organized by the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce, ACC, in partnership with the International Organization of La Francophonie, the objective is to examine the cotton value chain by studying ways to create wealth and jobs through increased production and processing of cotton byproducts and services through the creative partnerships with local businesses. The idea is to increase locally processed quantities. The OEF has adhered to the FICOTA concept. It has become one of its useful platforms to validate the OEF DEDICOT program. OEF DEDICOT program is simply identification and diversification of cotton, textile and clothing industries in the French speaking zone. A program created to support actors in the cotton value chain through the North-North, North-South, South-South tripartite initiative from cotton to textiles, garments and accessories. The implementation of FICOTA 2018 resolutions began during the second edition of the ACC Economic Day, which held on December 5, 2019, at the Hilton Hotel in Yaoundé. It's with a great pleasure that I am here today to the invitation to the nature of this second edition of the Journey Economic of the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce, under the theme of quality, performance, and production et la compétitivité des produits et services locaux dans le domaine de l'agro-industrie au Cameroun. Further to this second edition of the AED was launched the African Fashion Incubator Project on February 5, 2021 at the Yaoundé International Handicraft Center. This incubator is a product of the ACC whose aim is to validate the African cotton into textiles, garments and accessories. décembre 2021, la deuxième édition du Forum international pour la production et la transformation du coton textile et accessoire, FICOTA, jumelé à la sixième édition du Primi Beach Fashion Week, qui est célébré sous le thème « Coton africain ». Textile, tissus et accessoires du champ au marché pour la richesse et la création d'emplois. Je souhaite que ce Kelly Beach Fashion Week soit fluctué et bénéfique, je n'en doute pas, pour tous et qu'il puisse atteindre des retombées escomptées à l'issue de cet événement. Je déclare ouverte. La sixième édition de la Kribi Beach Fashion Week, deuxième édition du Forum international pour la production et la transformation du coton. Welcome to the Kribi Beach Fashion Week. 
Welcome to FICOTA in its second edition and in its third edition. Permit me to welcome the Mayor of the City, the Prefect of the Ocean of Credit, his assistants, the representative of the Minister of Women's Affairs, the representative of the Minister of Tourism, the representative of the, the Director General of the Agency for Small and Medium Size in Cameroon, and especially the international delegates. We have Dr. Isha and Madam Araf Abil, both Director General and Deputy Director General of the Egyptian Cotton Research Institute. They are our guests of honor from Egypt. They came all the way. Egypt is 200 years old in the cotton industry. They hold the cotton value chain in Egypt. We've been working with them with the OEF to build the cotton value chain for Africa. Their presence here is not a mistake. It's very, very, very important. And it was actually destined for them to be here. Then, Madam Awa, she is the Director General of City from Mali. This is the Textile Institute training best for Mali for textile transformation. Then we have Mr. Dulpango Gera, who is the diplomat excellency from Central African Republic, and he is the coordinator of OEF and the Dedicat program for the Central African Republic. We have Madam Wedrego Rianata from Burkina Faso. Who is the representative of the Minister of Burkina Faso and uh, the Commission for CICOT? CICOT is the Salon International for Cotton for Burkina Faso. Their event is in the third edition. Zikota is a partner and is coming up in January. And she's here to represent the Commissioner and the Government of Burkina Faso. We have Mr. Joseph Amati, who just spoke as the ambassador of New Tourism for Ghana. But he is here in double capacity. He just got appointed as the Youth Affairs President of the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce Commission. He's been in Cameroon for one month to work close to headquarters to see how he can work between the French-speaking African countries and the English-speaking African countries to implant the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce for the youth. Because the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce is set up to meet the needs of the youth so that the youth of Africa have a collective and unified thought about how they want to develop their continents. That is why the message of the Fikota speaks to the youth. And that is why I'm very happy to thank the Minister of Women's Affairs who understood the message and accepted to be the champion and Marin because she's been following us for five years. That is why I can't stop thanking the mayor of the urban city of Privy for believing in us and accepting that we be here today. For FICOTA and for ACC, we don't count numbers. We count the purpose. It's not because we have 10,000 people crowded in a common venue that we can bet the results that we see. We want experts and committed people. That is why we have here today all these experts that we have brought so that we brainstorm together. It is about thinking together and finding the solution for our African cotton and for our African fashion industry. We cannot continue to produce cotton in Africa, struggle to package it through our waters, send overseas, transform, and then we pay taxes for it and for us to wear. We say we cannot continue to see many children in Africa still going about naked because they cannot afford. Whereas if we dwell on our resources, transform them locally in a much more competitive manner, we are able to dress ourselves and be a dignified people. So that is why we are here today. I didn't want to do a protocol speech, a speech that is talking about so many things that are very technical, because the technical experts have been working and they will come up with a resolution that would give the way forward as to what next steps we must do. Because the first edition guided us on creating the African Fashion Incubator. The AFP. You will be watching on the stands and you will see what the African Fashion Project has been able to do since January 2021. We are focused on purpose and results. We are not focused on meeting and dividing for nothing, for no results. 
That's why we're here. And that's why we have Mali who trains. That's why we have Egypt who developed the cotton value chain. And Mr. Hisham was able to show us a t-shirt, 100% cotton, yesterday during the workshop. That shows how cotton from the farm is transformed until you have a t-shirt. Such a beautiful t-shirt coming from Africa. So this is the purpose of why we're here. We want to talk to ourselves. We want to educate ourselves. We want to see how we can become entrepreneurial through our own natural resources. And that is why I wish to say thank you and thank you. And like I cannot say that, stop saying thank you to my immediate collaborators, Jane from the United States of America. She's been working for four years. Jane is the baby has not stopped working for people. From the day we thought about creating the African Chamber of Freedom Commerce, she started giving her services voluntarily. So I just want to say that here today, I am going to hand over to Mr. Amati his certificate as the appointed chair of the African Youth Commission of the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce that he will take with him to Ghana for the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce office in Ghana and he will continue the mission for West Africa. Bons applaudissements, s'il vous plaît. Je suis animée par la passion de plaider les dossiers. Je suis un avocat. En tant qu'avocat, je ne peux pas voir certaines choses et rester moins. J'ai donc pensé que les dossiers difficiles, il faut le plaider. Et parce que les faibles demandent d'avoir un avocat, j'ai constaté que l'industrie du coton en Afrique a besoin de l'argent. Je me suis constitué avocat pour plaider le développement du coton en Afrique parce que je crois que je comprends ce qui se passe. Et quand on comprend ce qui se passe, et qu'on garde ça sur soi, et qu'on ne plaide pas pour les faibles, on n'a pas fait son devoir. Je suis en mission et je ne peux pas lâcher cette mission parce que j'y crois. Alors, le coton africain doit nourrir l'Afrique. Le coton africain doit développer l'Afrique. Le coton africain, le peuple continue à traverser qui vit sans être transformé. Le coton africain doit créer une industrie dans la zone industrielle de Kibi ici qui emploie 2000 minimum de Camerounais pour travailler dans cette usine. Il faut qu'on adhère tous à cette vision, à cette vision. On doit former les nôtres. On doit sortir les enfants de vulnérabilité parce que ailleurs c'est le métier qui grandit le pays. Ce n'est pas parce qu'on a été dans une grande école de formation qu'on produit la vie. On est celui qu'on est parce que c'est même pour produire quelque chose de sa tête. On doit être autonome. Alors, avocat, j'ai plaidé à l'international. J'ai siégé à la Cour internationale d'arbitrage pendant 4 ans. Je travaille avec la Chambre de commerce internationale pendant 18 ans. Je fondé le comité national de l'ICC au Cameroun. Je ne pouvais plus rester tranquille. J'ai dit, il faut faire au-delà, parce que si tu arrêtes, je ne suis pas, je ne suis pas prétentieux, mais je me suis dit que tu possèdes certaines connaissances que certaines personnes peuvent ne pas savoir. Bouscule-toi un peu, permets que d'autres savent ce que tu fais, afin que les autres suivent, afin que notre développement soit réel. Je crois au développement de la vie. Je crois à mon pays. Je suis une Camerounaise patriote et je crois que l'État joue son rôle. Et nous devons accompagner l'État pour jouer à mieux et à bien son rôle. Donc, avec la décentralisation aujourd'hui en Afrique, au Cameroun, nous voyons nos mères et dans nos mères à travailler parce qu'on ne les a pas votés pour le faire chantage. On les a votés pour les accompagner. Aidez-les à travailler pour nous. C'est pour là, ce n'est que par là que notre développement va être. Je vous ai dit que je suis un avocat. Toutes les faiblesses que je vois, je plaide. Parce que je plaide sans honoraires. Et je vous dis, je n'attends pas des honoraires. Et je vais toujours plaider. Mais je dis toujours que quand le fond est bon, l'univers porte. C'est pourquoi je suis debout. Parce que mon fond, sans prétention, est bon. Et donc les vagues ici sont en train de porter mon fond. Et c'est pour ça qu'on peut être ici, malgré toutes les difficultés que j'ai eues. Mais l'univers a porté ce projet. Le projet a été ici. Alors on peut que se féliciter. Il faut qu'on s'applaudisse pour tous pour nous-mêmes. Je voudrais donc saluer les partenaires GIZ qui a permis que ces partenaires euh, panélistes soient ici aujourd'hui. 
Je voudrais saluer Orange qui a voulu en venir. Je voudrais saluer Brasilis. Je voulais saluer Zélie. Je voulais saluer euh, toutes les autres partenaires qui sont ici et les ministères qui ont permis qu'il y ait une vie à cet endroit. Parce que sans eux, on ne peut pas aller. Je voudrais saluer Flavia Mbodi. Mesdames et Messieurs, les membres du gouvernement, ici représentés. Mesdames et Messieurs, les membres du corps diplomatique. Monsieur le maire de la ville de Kribi. Mesdames et Messieurs, les directeurs généraux des établissements publics administratifs et des entreprises des services publics, parapublics et privés. Monsieur le sous-préfet de l'arrondissement de Kribi Premier. Mesdames et Messieurs les magistrats municipaux, Madame Mary Concilia Antian, présidente du comité d'organisation du FICOTA. Mesdames et Messieurs les délégués départementaux et chefs de service, autorités religieuses, Mesdames et Messieurs les opérateurs économiques, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers invités, our guests and friends coming from Burkina Faso, Ghana, Egypt, Mali, United States, Central Africa Republic, and all over the world, you are welcome in our city, Trivi. Je salue particulièrement les distingués invités pour leur présence et leur participation massive à ce grand forum économique, moment par excellence de partager avec la jeunesse d'Afrique, du Cameroun et de Kribi sur les métiers de la filière coton, textile et accessoires, source de développement des richesses et de l'employabilité pour une jeunesse plus épanouie et dynamique. Mesdames et Messieurs, le thème retenu pour meubler nos assises de cette deuxième édition est coton africain, textile, tissu et objet, du champ au marché pour faire la richesse et la création d'emplois. In a widely recognized multiple partnership effort with Minader, Minwezi, Minmeza, Minprof, Minwex, Minac, IVAD, OEF, European Union, Keon, UNESCO, UNIDO, and the ECE, chaired by His Excellency Minister Achille Basilikin III, the African Economic Day addressed the theme of useful tools and mechanisms for the improvement of entrepreneurial activities in the CIMAC region. ECA has considered the CFTA Cameroon Roadmap as an important tool to improve competitiveness and access to emerging markets within the African cotton and beyond, if taken into consideration. The peculiarity of this second edition was the presence of international organizations like UNESCO, UNIDO, ICAC, Egyptian, CRI. I said also uh, Africa as an overall represent uh, maybe 10% of the whole total plantations area, but just we are share of 6% only from the whole the uh, cotton production. So we have to cooperate with each other to increase our productivity through so, uh, holding and getting the uh, new technology because at least we are thinking to uh, address our people from our uh, cotton, not send the cotton from the outside and bring it again as uh, as a textile or as a textile. I'd like also to say that we are, if we are export cotton as a raw material, is not benefit for us because, uh, uh, as I said, that is a value chain and it can come from the uh, transformers of cotton from all value chain is, in, is, is represent one to ten percent. And the GIZ Pro Cotton, which sponsored the participation of six African country delegates from Central Africa Republic, Egypt, Mali, Burkina Faso, Senegal. We also benefited from the infrastructural support of the Kribi Urban Council, co-sponsor of FICOTA, who was able to assemble participants at this important meeting attended by artisans and various actors of the cotton sector, who expressed their needs and jointly manifested their capital interest to benefit from a follow-up. In addition to the presence of these actors, this second edition was strengthened by the significant and enriching contributions of experts 
from Egypt, Ghana, Central Africa Republic, Mali, Burkina Faso, United States of America, Germany, France, Vietnam, Italy, India, to which was added the massive participation of panelists from governmental institutions and national agencies such as IRAD, SICAM, Business Upgrade Office, ANO, APME, MINPROF, MINI, who are indispensable actors for the development and structuring of the cotton textile industry. The engagement of institutional partners, the ministries and the state entities who took part in this forum demonstrate a genuine determination to achieve better prospects in the African cotton industry with Quibi as the hub for the development and transformation of African cotton into clothing and accessories. So basically, we, um, while we are having, making sure that everybody gets their badges, we also might have to reverse the plan a little bit because Sikam has a presentation to make and it looks like his presentation was supposed to be later. But since he's here and he has to leave, we might have to start with that. Well, good day and welcome to the Sakota 2021 in Creeby, Cameroon. Sakota is a conference and an exhibition for a better Africa by finding ways to improve the processing of cotton and from seeding to the finished products. During this conference, we want to demonstrate to governments, to NGOs and to industries that the creativeness of the young people and by investing in digital education is an opportunity to find new environment friendly and sustainable ways for processing cotton to make precious industrial products out of them for the world's market and that way we can improve the living and the wealth of the African nation. Fikota takes place in the beautiful coastal town of Kribi in Cameroon and the emotional and cultural highlight is the Kribi fashion show with the fashion mode contest. It definitely demonstrates that Kribi is at the same level like the famous festivals, like the one you see every year in the French Con. Uh, during the Fikota conference, you will hear a lot of influential international speakers from Europe, from USA and various other uh, countries, especially in Africa. We are especially thankful for the great support by the GIZ, the German Society for International Cooperation, who did not only help us funding the event, but also brought to us a great number of very, very great speakers and experts on cotton. Many thanks goes, of course, to Marianne Zhang. She is the founder and president of the African Chamber of Commerce in Yaoundé, and she is also the inventor of Fikota and a big promoter of cotton in Africa. Another great thank you goes to Jane Okobogo, and her organizing team. She will be your host and presenter on stage in the next days. And my very special thanks goes to my friend and brother, Monsieur Le Maire de Criby, Monsieur Guy Emmanuel Sabicanda, who does an amazing job in promoting Criby as a great place for industry and tourism. And it was a great honor that he joined us during the Intertourism Africa Fair in Accra, Ghana, end of September. And he was so convincing that everybody wanted to see Kribi now. Unfortunately, the COVID crisis stopped us from doing like this. But I must say as a foreigner, Monsieur Le Maire, you did a great job and an engaging job for promoting Kribi. Cotonier Industrial du Cameroun. 
comprenez donc que dans industriel, nous avons un volet industriel et nous avons un volet commercial. Donc, SICAM a été créé en 1965. La mission de SICAM, c'est de transformer le coton camerounais, exclusivement camerounais, qui est un coton de bonne qualité, pour le transformer en fil. Le fil que nous vendons à des artisans, nous fabriquons également dans les tissus. Et ces tissus sont imprimés pour les pains que vous connaissez et même les serviettes. Si qu'on possède essentiellement sur le plan industriel trois usines. Il y a une très grande usine de filature et de tissage située à Garoua, au nord du Cameroun, pour ceux qui connaissent. Nous avons également deux usines à Douala. Une usine qui fait dans la teinture et l'impression du pain, le pain du masse, les différents pains que vous connaissez. Et vous allez me dire que 6 000 tonnes de coton, c'est un peu vague. 6 000 tonnes de coton, quelle la terre, ça représente 24 millions de mètres de tissu. 24 millions de mètres de tissu en un an. Dans ces 24 millions de mètres, 35% de cette production était exportée vers les pays européens. Je dis bien exportée vers les pays européens. On avait des grands clients qui étaient des grands hôtels en Italie, en France. Et on les fabriquait des draps de lit à 100% coton et qui étaient très appréciés. En plus donc de ces draps de lit, Surika, qui fabriquait les serviettes, exportait également presque toute sa production. On retrouvait les serviettes de Surika à Roland Garros, vers des grands distributeurs de renom comme La Redoute, pour ceux qui se rappellent de cette époque-là. C'était vraiment la prospérité. C'est vraiment euh, le sommet de la séquence, on peut dire comme ça. Malheureusement, en 1990, avec la crise économique qui frappe le Cameroun, SICAM n'est pas resté euh, intouché, SICAM a été fortement touché par la crise. Le directeur de SICAM est l'actuel président de l'interprofession. C'est une structure qui, est, qui a été mise en place pour régler le problème de la coton culture jusqu'à la commercialisation. Donc, l'interprofession est divisée en trois collèges. Sur des cotons à la production du coton, si à la transformation, et maintenant, le troisième collège, le collège des artisans. Pourquoi j'amène ça sur la table Parce que si SICAM produit et que nous ne sommes pas là pour les transformer, nous sommes les, les premiers transformateurs du coton camerounais. Comme vous avez pris l'exemple tout à l'heure, nous tous ici, nous sommes habillés, mais combien sont habillés en produits SICAM Nous allons dans les marchés, nous cherchons des tissus tous les jours pour habiller nos clients, mais combien de clients portent que les produits SICAM Pourquoi Parce que vous-même vous avez dit tout à l'heure que vous êtes plus basé sur l'effet le du travail, euh, RDPC, Vitmas et autres. Bon, la bonne information que j'ai retenu, c'est que à la dernière réunion que j'ai eu avec nous, c'était ici, quand même, nous avait promis quand même qu'il devait avoir des nouvelles machines. C'est déjà une bonne chose parce que le problème, c'est que SICAM ne produisait pas tout type de tissu. Et si vraiment le gouvernement met l'accent sur les marchés nationaux comme le marché de l'armée, le marché des tenues scolaires, le marché du travail, ça va donner de l'emploi à énormément de jeunes. Parce que nous allons faire toutes les études là avec l'INS et autres dans le but de l'interprofession. Si quand doit produire les tenues de l'armée, moi là je suis basé, ça c'est ma petite histoire, je suis, je suis basé à une école de police, là où j'ai commencé à confectionner les tenues. Tous les jours ça me fait mal quand je vois les tenues qu'on donne aux policiers. Ce n'est même pas à 20% coton. So today I'm going to uh, talk to you about um, the German Supply Chain Due Diligence Act, which has been passed um, a couple of months ago by the German government. And uh, specifically, I would like to focus on what the requirements of the act are for buying companies headquartered in Germany and to discuss the implications for suppliers that are located around the world and including, of course, in Africa. So maybe a little bit about the background and why Germany has adopted such a regulation only recently. The main reason for this is that um, 
the United Nations have observed that a number of human rights violations occur, continue to occur across the planet. These human rights violations are in part to be tackled by governments, both local governments, but also international regulatory institutions. But the problem is those governments cannot solve all problems. And in part, um, businesses are also um, actors, relevant actors in the interplay of international economics and trade. So the idea is that if businesses are a player, they also have to contribute their share to the solution of those problems. Welcome everybody participating in Krivi or online. Unfortunately, the new COVID peak in Germany and the new Omicron variant made it irresponsible for me to travel to Cameroon even for this big event. But I had the luck to be in the beautiful country of Cameroon and the city of Krivi with its nice beach in October, so a chance to imagine what kind of perfect event the Ficota will become. First of all, I want to thank all the supporters that make the Ficota happen. The mayor of Krivi already hosted the press conference for the announcement of the Ficota. Madam Onambele Anchan, the president of the ACC, the African Chamber of Trade and Commerce, worked for over a year to make this event happen. But there are also a lot of others. There are the supporters, the workers to set up the facilities, the technical staff who made it possible on a short notice to present videos and online panels. Thanks to all of them, the Ficoter can take place during this difficult time. For me, the Ficoter is not only about textiles. For me personally, it is a kickoff for the a European and African approach to bring the African Union Agenda 2063 together with the UN guidelines for corporate accountability from 2011 into action. We will have amazing speakers from Africa, America and Europe. We will hear words from politicians, business managers and professors in sustainability and tourism. So everybody who listens carefully will see that there are some game changings that give the people of Africa a lifetime opportunity. Africa has some steps to take to become a primary source for semi-finished and finished goods. I have had the privilege of visiting and working in the West African countries, also in much of Asia over the last 15 years in the textiles industry. I in no way claim to be a, an expert on West African textiles, absolutely not. But I do have, I feel some very useful experiences and some insights that may provide you with a, a different viewpoint. What I'd specifically like to talk about is the opportunities and challenges. Now I was, over the last 15 years, I was working for the Flisco Group. I think most of you may know it, uh, Wax Hollande. So Flisco produced in the Netherlands, wax prints like what I'm wearing. Uh, also Uniwax in Ivory Coast, GTP in Ghana, Woodin. I had considerable experience uh, purchasing the grey cloth that they needed for their products. I've also been very much involved in, uh, I was also director for sourcing and CSR. The CSR part of it, corporate social responsibility, took me uh, all the way to the cotton fields of Nigeria and, and Benin, looking at very small scale farms and trying to work out how we could better use the cotton that is produced locally in the products we were producing. So let's look at, first of all, how the cotton becomes a garment step by step. What do you need? Generally, it's fairly logical, cotton. Having grown the cotton, it's then picked uh, and then taken to a gin. Logically, you need a huge volume of cotton to produce uh, cotton lint. So you're talking about very bulky uh, goods that have to be transported to a, a fairly large factory, the gin, where the cotton fibers are separated from the husks, the stalks, everything else. African cotton is generally medium plus staple length and hand picked. Now, what does that mean? Um, medium plus means that it's suitable for wax prints up to fairly fine shirting. Uh, the very fine uh, cotton with the long, long fibers, that's Egyptian cotton or Xinjiang cotton. Uh, also in Ivory Coast, there's some very, very good cotton, Burkina Faso, Mali. But generally the African cotton tends to be 
uh, above average in terms of quality and handpicked means that uh, labor, of course, that means jobs are produced, many more jobs than if it were machine picked. I am so happy about this whole organization for the fact that the organizers have really considered the youth in this very important discussion. All that we are doing, all the discussions that we are doing today, trust me you, if we don't consider the youth, we may always come here annually to have this conference and go, and things will still remain the same. The right people who can make the change are the young ones. Definitely we are going to grow, or we are going to leave them behind. The question is that if you are to test us today, how do you leave things behind? or who take over. If we are to cutting production right from the farm, a child or someone need to grow and take over from there. So I have a simple mission here. My topic here is youth entrepreneurship. Youth entrepreneurship, it is very simple. When we look at the larger population, youth are over 70% in every country. The youth population are more than that of the adults or the mature ones. The question is that when we talk of entrepreneurship, I'm very happy these young ones are here or the students are here to also learn from whatever topic we are discussing today. What is it at all when we talk about entrepreneurship? The entrepreneurship here is simply about individuals creating their own businesses. Now, if individuals are to create their own businesses, there are a few things we need to consider. How do we create business? And how do we start up? There are many people here who are into their own businesses, but then they have not taken the pain to know that they are into entrepreneurship. And once you agree the fact that you are into entrepreneurship, there are more things you need to know so that you will be up to standard. I always say that education is not only in the classroom. That is why we have formal education and informal education. The question still remains, if I have never been to classroom before, can I, can't I be an entrepreneur? The answer is no, you can be an entrepreneur, whether school or not. Statically, people having businesses today in Africa who are very rich, most of them have never even been to school before. But then they have employed the educated ones. L'état des lieux donc de la transformation du Goton au Mali. Ensuite, je vais vous parler plus spécifiquement du centre de recherche et de formation pour l'industrie textile Servitex. Qu'est-ce que le Servitex fait comme abomination? Qu'est-ce que le Servitex a fait depuis près de 30 ans dans le domaine de la filière coton textile Et qu'est-ce que depuis quelques années le Servitex est en train de faire en matière d'activité et puis d'accompagnement pour la filière coton textile Enfin, quelques conclusions. Alors, en parlant des raisons objectives, alors on ne peut pas les dissocier de la démographie. Vraiment. Donc là, vous ne voyez pas très bien, mais je vais vous dire le, les chiffres. Euh, en 2017, il y avait 1,3 milliard de consommateurs en Afrique. Donc ça veut dire que c'est 17%, c'était 17% de la population mondiale. Selon les projections, en 2050, on devrait être aux alentours de 2,5 milliards. Donc on fait un bond, on part de 1,3 à 2,5 milliards. So the, the concept here is creating a tourism ecosystem in the sense that uh, fashion ecosystem, sorry, uh, related to trade, education, uh, and tourism. So I see these three areas as being different parts of the equation so that um, we can achieve as much as possible by bringing people in from different parts 
of the world, different industries, different priorities, um, different organizations, et cetera, different resources, which I think is a big part of it. So part of the theme for this conference is wealth creation and employment. And if you think singularly only about the, the smaller uh, area in terms of fashion, you may be limited. And that's why I wanted to talk about some other areas that can impact it. So I look at this idea of an ecosystem and these are the different elements. Uh, you have wealth creation, you have um, fashion exchanges, you have competition, you have tourism, you have investment, and you have education, of course. So let's talk about education first. Part of the process, and I know uh, Joseph was, was being asked about, you know, who are we talking about when we're talking about the youth? Uh, Est-ce qu'ils sont si petits ou ils sont très très grands? Si on est des, des étudiants, on, on veut être éduqué à tout âge. Moi, j'apprends, même à mon âge, dans les 40 ans. Euh, et c'est tous les jours, c'est quelque chose que j'apprécie je, je, ce qu'il y a autour de moi. Et je, je trouve de, de nouvelles idées. So, you don't have to be a certain age to be a student. Um, younger, it's nice to plant the seeds when you're younger. And so when I think of fashion, uh, you know, how young are they starting to think about design and textiles and the pieces that go into what uh, fashion is? We are so glad So I will give some information first of all about my institute and after that I will take, speak about the presentation. Maybe some other will speak about the cotton sector in Africa, but I will handle it from the other point at least uh, and explain. Uh, I'm working in Cotton Research Institute. It's a building 120 years ago. Uh, this is the only institute in Egypt. It's uh, interested mainly about the cotton. Already we have another um, agriculture's uh, faculty and department, they work on the bottom, but mainly we are, uh, have the, uh, we can say, big tasks on the bottom because our interest is mainly to produce uh, the varieties. And we are produced about 100 uh, varieties through 120 years ago. Uh, our interest is also to uh, produce uh, breeder seed and foundation seed. Uh, to the farmer, uh, and we are participating with our colleague uh, inside Egypt to draw the agriculture policy for the cotton to identify an area uh, and even also uh, specify, specify the specific varieties for the each location, uh, follow the varieties in the market uh, inside and outside. Uh, if the varieties deteriorated, we already cancelling on the drug go directly to uh, release the other uh, one. Uh, work with the farmer um, directly for uh, national campaigns, uh, giving him the uh, instructions about the new varieties. Uh, in addition, also, as um, maybe I'm forbidden, Food Research Institute consists of 10 departments. Five uh, from them working directly with the farmer, breeder uh, department, uh, agronomy, maintenance, physiology, uh, department of uh, evaluations of new varieties in different locations, uh, and the other group working mainly with the industry, uh, spelling mill, uh, uh, fiber technology department, uh, breeding, uh, chemicals, gening. Uh, we have about uh, 300 uh, researchers. Sidelines of Ikota was organized the Quibi Beach Fashion Week Festival marked by a daily evening fashion parade. This festival provides visibility and opportunities for fashion designers to showcase their talents during the catwalks of models. KBF Week ends with a contest where models and fashion designers display their talent before a jury and the crowd, at the end of which the best top model, photo model, and best fashion designers are voted. 
Her best top model at this second edition was Leia Kofani. Her best photo model, Amanda Therese, and her best fashion designer was Nicole Ngongos from Joan Design. In short, Ficota KBF Week 2021 is a space for exchange, sharing, promotion and networking between artisans, researchers, designers, entrepreneurs, investors, development partners, government and private companies. The creation of a public-private partnership is therefore essential to boost the economy of Cameroon, in particular, and Africa at large. Déjà, je, je remercie Dieu parce que je peux vous dire que l'inspiration ne vient pas de moi. Je travaille, je pourrais dire, en collaboration avec Dieu parce que avant de me coucher, je prie, je dis voilà une compétition, qu'est-ce que je dois faire Et puis l'inspiration me vient comme ça. Et maintenant, je suis vraiment très contente. La première participation et je l'ai reçu comme ça, vraiment, je suis très, très, très contente. Et je tiens à remercier ici la, euh, la présidente de Ficota, la maire de Ficota, euh, maître Adjan Concilia, que j'appelle affectueusement Anti Concilia, qui vraiment m'a boosté. C'est elle qui m'a appris à mettre les points sur les, les finitions. La deuxième place, je suis contente parce que je ne m'attendais pas. Ça, c'est sûr que je ne m'attendais pas par rapport à ça. Et par rapport à la première place, je suis fière d'être deuxième par rapport, par rapport au travail de moi. Et celle qui est sortie première, je trouve que moi, je suis contente de ma place. Et je remercie grandement euh, notre maire nationale, la maire de Ficota. Grâce, grâce à elle que tout ça a pu avoir lieu. I would start by saying I want to thank uh, uh, Metro Acha, Consilia Mary Acha on her belly for giving everybody that has been part of this experience the opportunity to experience this 10 days. These were 10 days of extreme hard work, extreme joy, extreme exposure to the textile industry in a way that we could not have thought of. We were able to have conferences, interactive conferences, with uh, members from other countries of the world and experts from other countries of the world. The knowledge that we gained through this experience in our conferences is knowledge that you cannot, is priceless. Just the fact that we were able to assimilate those many people from all over the world interactively between Cameroon, live, and others outside the world, from Germany, from Italy, from uh, New York. That meant a lot, not to include the members that came from Burkina Faso, from Egypt, from Central African Republic, from all the other countries, those from Ghana, we have started something. Ficota, this was the second edition of Ficota, but it has taken Ficota to the next level. The ability to bring so many experts together, to share knowledge, to be able to come up with resolutions that in the future of this industry, they will take it to the next level and generate the income and bring economic growth to Africa as a whole through ACC and its experts is actually a great idea. So I am personally humbled to even be part of this process. Uh, I cherish the fact that uh, I have the opportunity to be part of it in any capacity. So uh, experience the, the beach side, alongside hard work, alongside fun, alongside accomplishing everything that we did throughout the process. I just want to say, hey world, wake up, Ficota is the next big thing. So Google Ficota, Google ACC, it is the next big thing happening in the textile industry.
Bikota is the only thing happening in the textile industry in Africa. So Google it, there's a whole lot more to come. This was just the beginning and there is a lot more to come. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to say something about it. Nous avons pris part euh, du 10 au 19 euh, décembre euh, à ce, ce, ce grand rendez-vous qui est le Forum international du, du coton. L'occasion a été permis, euh, l'occasion nous a permis, n'est-ce pas, d'échanger autour euh, de plusieurs thématiques et c'est une grande satisfaction, c'est une fierté pour l'Afrique. Eh bien, l'Afrique ne peut se développer qu'à travers le coton. C'est pourquoi euh, nous nous sommes mobilisés, nous nous sommes mobilisés pour euh, cet événement euh, majeur. Eh bien, la grande satisfaction aussi, c'est par rapport euh, à l'engagement de, de l'OIF, qui est un partenaire euh, stratégique dans le domaine du coton, c'est-à-dire que la francophonie euh, économique, et qui a bien voulu donner euh, son accord de principe et... Euh, <coughs> Euh, en alluant un budget conséquent pour euh, l'année 2022, euh, pouvant permettre euh, au pays des Dicot, c'est-à-dire le pays pilote, notamment euh, le Cameroun, la République centrafricaine, le Mali et le Burkina Faso, pour pouvoir relancer effectivement la filière euh, coton. Je suis très 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 heureuse d'être euh, accrédée. Euh, je suis passée par Yaoundé et d'être venue au Cameroun. Nous avons eu un très bon accueil. Moi, j'ai connu euh, la promotrice de FICOTA depuis 2018. 2018, on s'est rencontrés au Sikot Mwaka. C'est une dame très engagée, dynamique et qui veut euh, qu'on collabore, qu'on se donne la main autour du coton, ses valorisations, etc. On s'est encore rencontrés euh, en Égypte en 2019 dans le cadre du programme euh, Dédicot, densification et diversification du coton dans la zone euh, francophone, donc euh, dans le cadre de l'OIF de la francophonie. Encore une fois, elle m'a épatée par euh, sa, son engagement vis-à-vis -vis de ce secteur. Et si aujourd'hui, elle nous invite à collaborer en Afrique pour pouvoir valoriser la chaîne de valeur du coton, je ne pouvais que répondre positivement à son appel. Et je suis très très heureuse d'être, euh, d'avoir participé aux conférences, euh, au panel du FICOTA et les résolutions qui en sont sorties hier. J'espère que nos états respectifs en tiendront compte et que euh, ça concourt encore une fois à la valorisation et au développement du coton. Made in Africa. I'm made in Africa, you can take me to Asia. I'm made in Africa. Yeah, yo, 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 that's a good thing, man. Fikota has come to stay. I say a very big thank you to all members of Fikota, all members of African uh, Chamber of Trade and Commerce. Yes, of course, I've been here for the past one month, all in organizing Fikota 2021. It's a big experience. My being in Africa is not exceptional from other African countries that I've been to. Being in Cameroon has proved that Africa, we are one.